I'm Mark Hunter of the Sales Center. I want to talk to you right now about how to present your price. Here's the challenge. Too many salespeople, what they do is just because the customer asks for your price. Hey, what's your price on this? Salespeople say, oh, I got to deliver the price. No, you don't. No, you don't. You never put a price out in front of a customer until you have first understood three things. One, what's the critical need they're trying to, to address? Is it a pain? Is it a gain? Is it a problem? Is it an opportunity? What is it? Two, are you dealing with the decision maker? And three, are they going to make a decision right now? That's that. This is absolutely so critical. But how do you present your price? One of the biggest issues that I find in this remote work environment is that too many prices are being delivered just by way of an email. They just give, send out an email. Here's what happens when you do that. When you send your price out by way of email, you have now given your customer the opportunity to take your price and to shop it with everyone else out there. Because now your price is in writing, your price in writing. So they can sit there and go to their current supplier. They can go to somebody else and your price all over the place. The other thing is this. It's so easy for the customer to sit there and just respond and say, your price is too high. You see, I want to deliver price face to face. Now, you can't always do that, right? I, I understand that. But you can minimally say, hey, I'm going to send you. The, but you know what? Hey, a few things in this price piece that I need you to really understand. And what I'm going to do is... I'm going to send it to you, but we need to have a conversation about it. How's your calendar at four o'clock today? And at 3.59, that's when you push send to send that document. And then you have a conversation with them. And when you send it, you send it as a PDF. I'm never going to send it to them as a Word document or an email because they can change it. They can change it. It's got to be a, a PDF, but there's got to be legs attached to it. There has to be legs attached to it. Otherwise, you run the risk, again, of it being shopped. Every price offer that you put out there also has to have a deadline attached to it. What's the deadline? What's the deadline? In other words, this price is only available for this date. Now, does that mean after that date, the price goes up? No, no. You, you can make an exception all you want, but you're trying to drive a decision. Because otherwise, what happens is you put a price point out there, and then what happens is they don't do anything. A year later from now, they come back to you and say, hey, this is the price I want to pay. No. You always have an expiration date on all your offers. And I say it's, it's anywhere from three days to 14 days, depending on the industry, depending on what it is that you're selling, period. Now, how do you go and present the offer? The way you present the offer is this. You never just present the offer, but you always wrap it around the outcome that the customer's looking for. What was the big deal that the customer's looking to solve? Based on our conversation and the issues that you have and the risks that your company is going to be going through, this is the solution we recommend to address that issue. See what I did was I'm putting the offer on the table, but I'm wrapping it around what it is. You always wrap it around that. Why? Because there has to be a reference point. Two, when you present the package, you present the package two ways. You present the package, one, with a high-priced offer. You give them the ultimate package. Go ahead and give it to them. Let it, it's got everything in it. And you let them throw up. You let them upchuck. You let them oh, vomit all over because it's so expensive. That's okay. And you say, fine, I've got another option for you and you put the proposal on the table in front of them. You share with them the plan that really is what you really feel is, is right for them. And you know what's interesting? They're gonna look at that and the price is gonna be less. And they're gonna compare that to the high priced one. They're gonna go, wow, this is a bargain. You see, it's called the power of contrast. Power, of, I love the power of contrast. Power of contrast is so beautiful because if you had just put that second offer on the table to them, not giving them the ultimate package. They would say, oh, that's, that's too high. I need you to reduce that price more. But because you give them the ultimate offer first, that, that becomes the anchor point. See, that becomes the anchor. And see, by doing this, what you've done is you've given them actually two anchors. You've anchored the proposal around the solution they're looking for, and you've anchored it around a higher price. Now this becomes much more acceptable to them. You see, what is this about? It's about helping the customer to be able to make a decision. 
And oh, by the way, when you do this also, just as I'm doing right now, I'm giving you eye contact, body language, and a firm voice. You never, ever, I had a buyer tell me one time, he said, I can always tell when there's a discount to be had because if the salesperson can't deliver the price with a firm voice, eye contact and body language, I know there's a discount to be had. More discounts are given because the salesperson fails to believe in the price than are given based on the demands of the customer. Yeah. You see, it's up to you to believe in your price. You believe in the price because of the solutions and the outcomes you can provide. It's not, oh, wow, we're making an obscene amount of money. Or we're doing, no, who cares? It's the value you create. It's the reason people go into Starbucks and pay six, seven, eight dollars for a cup of coffee. Yeah, they do. They do. Because it's the perception of the value they receive. But that same person would not walk into a McDonald's and pay six, seven, eight. No, in fact, it's a different customer. You see, that's the other thing. You sell to your customer base, not someone else's customer base. Stay in your lane. And if you aren't part of your customer base, you'll never be able to sell to it, period. Hey, I'm Mark Hunter, the sales hunter. Jump out to the website, thesaleshunter.com, TSHU, the sales hunter university. All of that content is there for you. I'm Mark Hunter. Thanks for selling. 